And welcome to Sports on Tap Summer Spotlight. I'm Rob Trauman. Ed Dick joining me here as well. And our guest tonight, she's a native of Olmstead Falls, Ohio, where she set the Olmstead Falls High School record uh, for pole vault of 13 feet. She went to the University of Dayton. She transferred and was a two-time NCAA Division II champion at Ashland University. And now she can add USA Olympian to that list of accomplishments. Katie Najat joins us, the USA pole vaulter. Katie, thanks for joining us. We appreciate Hi. it. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. I mean, with everything going on, we know how busy you are. Um, you know, how's it been going? Is everything packed already? Do you have everything packed or do you wait on that uh, a little bit for a few days until you get everything in order a little bit more? No, I'm getting there. So my one suitcase is pretty much all packed with clothes, but then there's <laughs> another suitcase that'll have like my therapy things and food and, you know, bathroom stuff. So it's, this is definitely my biggest pack for a competition, but you're there for two weeks. So, and especially this year, they're just, it's, it's kind of lockdown mode. So you don't want to forget anything. So <laughs> what have, uh, what have you heard? Like, what have you heard or what do you know about the, uh, the, some of the, the, the very, the protocols that are going on there that, you know, most of us have probably read about it in articles. You know, what more, what more to it is there than what we, what we may have read about. So, I mean, I've heard a lot of what everyone else has. I've heard some people say life in the village, feels relatively normal. I've heard other people say they're bored out of their minds. So, um, but th I think the thing that I found most interesting was um, our phones. They're, they're going to be tracking us through our phones. And so if your phone comes within six feet of someone else's phone that tests positive, you'll get in trouble. So like you have to keep your phone on your body at all times. Um, like if, even if you're charging it next to someone else's and you're six feet away, like that, that was one of the ones that I was like, wow, okay, this is intense. Um, good thing I'm constantly glued to my phone, so that won't be a problem. But, <laughs> um, but yeah, I just, I, for me, I don't really know what to expect anyways, since this is my first team. I've been in a village before for the Pan Am games, but I think it was kind of a, a miniature version of that. So um, yeah, this will be kind of my first time and it'll be an interesting one. I'm sure. I'm sure it's going to be a lot of fun for you. And I mean, you deserve it. Look at everything you've gone through. Um, first, let's start with with growing up in Northeast Ohio. What was it like for you um, growing up in Northeast Ohio as a kid? I loved it. I mean, I didn't know anything else, obviously, but I, I love my hometown and I love being from Cleveland. And I mean, anyone can attest to that. I am constantly repping Cleveland. Um, and yeah, it just, it was, Olmsted Falls was such a great community to grow up in. Um, I, I feel like, you know, I, my dad passed away when I was young, when I was 16. And I, I feel like that town played a part in raising me with my mom. Um, and so I just, I can't say enough good things about, you know, where I grew up. How did you, uh, how did you get into pole vault uh, back in, uh, back when you were at Olmsted Falls? I saw the high schoolers doing it. It was, they took the middle school team out to the high school track. Um, it was the first time I was able to do sports for the school. Before that, it was community and church leagues. And so it was the first time that I knew of track and field being, you know, offered. And so when they took us over, I saw the high schoolers doing it. And I was a gymnast when I was little and I loved anything, upper body strength, adrenaline. I was constantly climbing on things that I shouldn't have been, you know, breaking my arm, climbing on things I shouldn't have been and falling off of it or actually <laughs> flip off of it, I should say. Um, and so <laughs> it was just the perfect kind of fit for me. And so I, I begged the coaches for days to let me go over and try it. And they finally were like, oh, go like, <laughs> I, don't want to do. I, I don't think they knew much about pole vault. So I don't think they wanted to deal with someone pole vaulting in middle school, but I just was very persistent. And if you know me at all, when I want to do something, I don't really let it go. <laughs> so now, did you play any other sports growing up or, or was it kind of, you know, when you were younger, obviously, I don't know when, um, you know, pole vaulting got more and more with track and field, but were there any other uh, sports that you got into? 
Yeah, I grew up, I think I tried just about every sport. Um, I grew up on the golf course and I played golf in high school. I did swimming and diving in high school. I did softball and soccer growing up. Um, and so I, I love that. I, I was somebody that wanted to try everything. And even in track, I was doing, in high school, I was doing hurdles. I was doing the, the sprinting. And so I, I was somebody that wanted to do a bunch of different events and different sports. Um, so yeah, I, I wouldn't say I really narrowed in on track until college. Um, but even then I was, you know, on the relays. And so it, it wasn't until post collegiately, I really just stuck to bull ball. Right. <clears throat> what other events did you do uh, besides, uh, besides the relays um, in, in high school or in, in any other track capacity? Uh, just the hurdles um, and, and the sprints. I really didn't do any of the other field events. I mostly because I wanted to pole vault as much as possible. So anytime they let us go do the field events, I was immediately to the pole vault pit. So, yeah. I mean, what were, was there a good memory or a great memory that you had at Olmstead Falls High School? You know, you, you were there and, and you set the school record of 13 feet when you were there. Um, what, what were some of the great memories you had going to Olmstead Falls High School? So my, actually my favorite track and field memory that I think will be very hard to beat, even if it goes really well in a couple of weeks. Um, <laughs> uh, my sophomore year, so it was the last year my dad was able to watch me compete. And uh, it was, I believe the conference meet or Bulldog Relays, it was a home meet, it was a big meet. And, um, I was going for a new personal best of, you know, 11 feet. I had won the meet. So once you win, you get to choose what heights you go to. And I had never jumped that 11 foot barrier before. And so we, I asked for it to be put at 11 and my coach was like, but the meet records, 11 feet, you should go 11 one. And I was dumb at that point. It was like, no, no, I just, I don't care about the record. I just want it, my personal record. And so I, I run down and I clear it and they told me that they had secretly put it to 11 one and they announced it on the loudspeaker and my dad ran up and he was like crying. And so it was my oh. big record and, you know, and he was a part of that. And I have a picture from that day and it was just, yeah. So there will be, I think very few things that ever top that, um, but I might get really close in a couple of weeks. So we'll see. <laughs> yeah, that's, I mean, that's a great story though. And, and I mean, see, whenever you, you probably didn't know about it, but then you did it and it probably was like, I knew I could do it, but you don't, you didn't probably want to take that risk, yeah. which, uh, yeah, which, which is was, very cool. Yeah. I'm so glad that they did that. And I was, I can't, I'm, I'm glad that I am not like that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> It's one inch, like okay. For uh, for, for for those uh, for those of us who may not be uh, as track and field savvy, um, a couple of my uh, one of my great friends from high school uh, did pole vault in high school, and he went to Mount Union and did some pole vault. Yeah. Um, so I, I hope he doesn't and is not too disappointed in me for asking this question. Yeah. Um, but for everybody out there, you know, what's the Explain pole vault in the very, in the most layman's terms possible, as far as like the run up, the, the set and everything. Yeah. So pole vault, when you break it down into its simplest form, it's just the transfer of energy. You're transferring energy from the, you're creating energy from the run. And then you jump up into the takeoff and you're kind of pushing the pole away from you to create that bend. A lot of people like think that it's more of a pole in a row and it's you actually when you first initially jump off the ground you want to push it away from you to transfer that energy forward and poles differ in length and stiffness so the longer stiffer the pole you need more energy to, to move it but if you can handle it the return is going to be greater um and so yeah you're just trying to transfer that energy forward into the pole and then you get upside down so that it can shoot you up in the air so hope now that it, broke it down easy enough <laughs> that's all that. it's a good physics lesson if nothing you know that's a great yeah. physics lesson there yep i get a physics lesson daily. now <laughs> yeah <laughs> now if if you break the pole what happens i mean do you get to do it again or is that your is that your turn 
No, because it's like an equipment malfunction. So okay. like you get a do over, but the problem is now you don't have that pole. So sometimes there was actually back in 2019 at the world championships, one of the girls, I, um, Angelica Bankston, um, she came down, pole broke. She landed in the box. She got up. She was okay. And then she borrowed another competitor's pole and then cleared her national record on the next jump. So it was pretty, oh, man. Incredible. it's jarring. It's, you know, it's a lot of force. If you've ever, if you've ever swung a baseball bat and you know what, it's like, just, it vibrates up into like where your hands are at like when you hit it, like right in that right spot, that's kind of that sensation. Um, and so a lot of times it can break your, you know, fingers, hands, it, because it's just a lot of force coming back up. I've only broken one pole and thankfully that did not happen. Um, but I was sore for the next couple of days. Um, but usually you just kind of land in the pit, um, and you get back up and you try again. So. Yeah. It's crazy how high <clears throat> you go, especially when you pole ball, but, um, how many poles do you take with you then, you know, on, on a trip to Tokyo, yeah. You know, are you limited on a certain amount of poles you can take or do you take, you know, as many as you're comfortable with? Yeah. I mean, you take, you can take as many as you want, but you have to carry them. So we try to get <laughs> the one tube. Um, so I would say anywhere from eight to 10. Um, I think right now I might have 11 stuffed in there. I don't know how, but um, <laughs> you, because it, it differs in, like I said, stiffness and length. And so when you're getting warmed up, you're on shorter, softer poles. Um, and then as you get going, you know, it might be a day where it's bad conditions. And so you want maybe a smaller one. Um, if it's really good conditions with a tailwind where you're faster, stronger, more adrenaline you want. So you want a range, you want a variety. Um, and so that's how, you know, guys can jump so much higher. They can get on much longer, much stiffer poles than the women can, but um, yeah. So I, we travel with, with that variety, um, so that we have just some warm up poles and then full approach if you're really on. So. Gotcha. So you, you, uh, you're a two-time national champion at, uh, at Ashland university and, uh, and then you started competing with the, with the U S uh, in the various United States events. Uh, what's the, what's the jumping competition, um, and is it one of those deals where you uh, where you excel or you 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 meet the level of the competition that you're going against? Um, you know, what's the you know, if you tell us a little bit about the uh, about probably the main difference between competing at the collegiate level and then going to the national level? Yeah, the biggest difference is the height, and it really just comes down to if you jump high enough. And so D two does tend to be a bit lower than D1. D1 tends to be a little bit lower than the U.S. level, but th I mean, that's not always the case. My senior year of college, I jumped high enough to qualify for U.S. nationals. Um, but yeah, the, the biggest difference is just the qualifying heights to get in. Um, and so like division two, I believe there was just an auto mark. You just had to jump that high to get into the national meet. Whereas D1, it was a pre like a regionals and then you had to be top 12 there and then you go to nationals um and in usa track and field other than the olympic trials you just have to jump a certain height and then you compete at the national meet um and it's the same for the trials except for the trials, there's a prelim day and a final. So they'll bring in, you know, double the amount of people they normally would and then narrow it down to the top 12. And then a couple of days later, we compete again. Um, and so really, yeah, just the, the height requirement is higher um, a lot. And the US trial, the US championships is, serves as the trials, whether it's for world championships, the Olympics, whatever. So, and you just have to be top three on that day. Um, so other than just jumping the required height to get there, there is no, I mean, you, you can go, it doesn't matter where you come from, who you are, um, and where you did it. It has to be a legal meet, but yeah. Now in 2016, 
Um, I know it said, you, you know, you came in fifth place and I'm sure you were heartbroken with that, but then it, it seemed like you didn't give up. Like, you know, a lot of people can get really down, I'm sure about that, but you got right back at it and I'm sure you used it as motivation, you know, talking to the high school kids and kids all over that, you know, might not make it right away. What's your advice to them? Um, like you not to give up and continue and, and look where you're at right now. So what would your advice be to them? You know, you came up a little short and you didn't give up and now look where you're at. Yeah. I, I'd like to think that I'm kind of the poster child for if it doesn't happen immediately, it doesn't mean it's not going to happen. Um, granted you have to work hard. You have to be willing to set your ego aside and get out of your comfort zone. I, you know, had, at the time, one of the best days of my life at the trials, and it still wasn't good enough. And that was very humbling because up until that point at pretty much any major event where I really wanted something like at my national championships in college, my state meet in high school, when I really wanted it, I usually walked away with the result I wanted. And so that was really the first time when I had a great day and it didn't go my way. Other, other women just had phenomenal days, days of their lives. And so that said to me, okay, like you can't, you can't get away with what you're doing now. You're not going to make it, um, with, with just staying in your comfort zone and being at home. And, and so I, I reached out to, you know, my now coach Brad Walker, and I'm so grateful that he took me on because he completely transformed me as, not just an athlete, but as a human being and just my confidence on and off the runway, I'm an entirely different person. Um, but yeah, I just, I say, as long as you have the work ethic, which I, I admittedly had to learn. Um, and, you know, like I said, set your ego aside, say, I don't know it all and get yourself in a situation where you can really learn and, and make yourself better. Um, yeah. Any, anything can happen. What was the, what was the, what was the biggest uh, area of improvement that uh, coach Walker worked with you on uh, between 2016 and, and 2020, 21? I, I would say we kind of broke it into two parts. And the first part was the mental game, my mind on the runway. When I came to him, I was afraid to pull vault. Um, I would just kind of run down deer and headlights you know, throw my hands up, hope for the best. I wasn't really in control of what I was doing, but I was athletic enough to, that I, I was good enough. Um, but you can only get so far with when you vault that way. And so the first year was really just tackling the mental side of it and teaching me how to think on the runway. And when a lot of people will say like, just shut your mind off and go, but when you think the right way and when you think about the right things, you can get your body to do what you want it to do. And so that was the first part of it. And then the second part, then once we kind of fixed the mentality, we were then really able to tack tackle the technical side. And for me, my biggest weakness was always the takeoff, that impulse from running. And I, one of my biggest strengths, I would say, is that I'm really fast on the runway. And I wasn't utilizing that to the best of my ability to, you know, like I said, you, you want to get on bigger poles to toss you higher. And so I was, I was not transferring energy well at all. And so I talked about, you want to push the pole away from you. I was like this going upside down right away. And so that it, it can, until you learn how to approach it though, it can be a little scary. So, you know, that, it was just, yeah, teaching me how to think and then really teaching me how to attack in the last few steps and really jump through the space rather than just kind of get picked up off the ground. Now, is he a coach that knows kind of your demeanor and how to approach you? Say you do make a mistake. Does he know how to communicate with you? So, you know, you both aren't, you know, a little bit down during that time period? Because I know sometimes coaches, you know, they, they want to push buttons the right way and mean well, but sometimes the approach to the athlete, I think is important too. Yeah. He has been the most perfect coach for me. And I, I genuinely feel like 
there are no perfect coaches out there, but there are perfect coaches for people. Mm -hmm. And he is my perfect coach because not only technically is he able to, you know, give me what I need, but mentally and emotionally, he could get through to me. He could tell he's really good at reading people. And so he's like, he knew from the moment I said hi to him, like what kind of mood I was going to be in and how to deal with me that day. But what I really liked about him is he's tough in that he expects you to come in and work hard, but he's not a yeller. He's not going to scream at you. And I, if I get yelled at, I cry. I'm a 30 year old woman. And if you yell at me, I cry. That's just because I'm so hard on myself. And when I get frustrated, that's, it's just water work. So um, he realized that pretty quickly and he just, he was able to see that and he just, he made it very rational. He made it very logical and he made it very simple. And the pole vault for me has always been very emotional, very anxiety inducing. And so he really brings me back to earth um, and just makes it just about the cues. It's not emotional. It's just like, if you execute this and this, this will happen. And so he just, I, I tend to be very emotional. So he keeps me very grounded in that. <laughs> I'm talking so about, up. oh, go ahead, Ed. No, after, after you're up. Um, I was going to ask you about the Olympic trials because, I mean, what a, a job you did um, at the Olympic trials. Was that nerve wracking for you or is that, you know, in your comfort zone because you've been to so many meets now that you're, you're comfortable with what you're doing? Because I know, I mean, it's, it's pretty high pressure, especially, you know, when you're going for the Olympics and then it's not going to come around for another four years. Was that pretty nerve wracking for you or? Or were you pretty comfortable in that setting? No, I I don't care how ready, seasoned you are. That meat is a different monster um, because you know everything you've ever wanted is just on the other side of it. And I've been nervous before, but and I, I said this in 2016 and it was exactly the same this time, but maybe even it was different, worse and better in some ways. It was, but it was just very emotional. I mean, I was on the verge of tears the entire probably month. Um, and it just, it's this, there's just this energy that is just move, moving around in my body in a way I've never really felt before. And it was just a matter of channeling it the right way. But again, Brad has done a fantastic job of getting me to focus on the cues as soon as I pick up the pole and start moving it's just you're dialed in and you're trying to execute and and luckily for me something that I was I don't know I was born with is the ability to compete and perform when the pressure's on I I my gymnastics coaches even when I was a kid were like we don't get it she doesn't practice like this and then she goes out there and she does really well like so I've always done well in situations like that, which I'm, I mean, that is a gift from God. So I can't take it on some credit for that, but, um, he just helped me to, to channel that nervous energy even better. Um, and yeah, I, I think, yeah, <laughs> that's, that's the best way that I could probably sum that up. <laughs> well, I mean, that's, it, it looked, I mean, I watched it. I mean, I was nervous, you know, yeah. <laughs> watching that because it's like, it's, it's just such an opportunity. And, and I mean, you've done it, you know, countless times, but I've, I've obviously, I've watched a lot of it and I get nervous just watching the Olympians, even in the Olympics, you know, when I watched it, you know, when, when it's a hundred meters, cause I know everything's on the line at that time. And then it comes around, um, you know, another four years for gymnastics. I like watching, I, I like watching all events really whether it's winter or summer Olympics, I think there's nothing like it, but um, you know, I, I've never been in a situation. I never will, but having you and, and you know, you're from the area, which is amazing. And, and just your story has, has been incredible on, on so many different levels, but it, it's cool to hear your perspective and, and kind of what you've gone through because it's really, you put in the time, like you said, which is a lot of time, and now do you have time to hang out with family? Did you have time before you went to, to Atlanta to hang out with family and, and yeah. kind of enjoy some family time and friends time here? 
A little bit. Um, I haven't been like home home, but they got to come to the trials. It was my mom, my brother, my sister, my aunt, my boyfriend, my mom's best friend, her daughter. So it was a good group where, you know, I got to go out to eat with them beforehand. They got a really awesome Airbnb kind of out in wine country. So we went there for a barbecue one night and um, that for me, family keeps me grounded. And so I enjoy those things. Obviously I'll, I'll, there are definitely things I'll say no to, but I like to see my family before big meets. Um, whereas I know some people just like want to stay laser focused. I, I need that. Um, and so then afterwards, um, you, I, that night I got to hang out with them and then the next day a bit, I got to hang out with them. So yeah. And I'll go back, uh, I believe August 13th it is that weekend um for kind of a meet and greet in Olmstead Falls so that'll be really great to see everyone so oh very cool yeah hopefully you have some hopefully you have some neckwear to bring home that's what we're hoping <laughs> yeah me too <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, uh, so when you're uh I, i'm interested in the uh so when you're when you're training and you're working through the technique and work through the mental aspect of it what other um you know what other exercises that you that do you need to do uh to get yourself ready to get your to keep yourself in shape from a, both a fitness and a strength perspective yeah we do a lot of lifting um and a lot of olympic lifting so cleans snatches things like that and squatting benching we my coach when he was an athlete um i don't know if i said this but he's a two-time olympian two-time world champion himself he had the american record for a time so when he was an athlete he was somebody that once he felt something once technically he was always able to do it so vaulting he, he was just a, a machine like i just i aspire to be like him every day um but he so for him it was how much of an athlete can i be and so it was getting in the weight room to get as strong as he could to be as fast as he could on the runway and as powerful as he could. And so he, that's how we do a lot of our training is we're big on lifting. We do a lot of sprinting without the pole in our hands. Um, we do plyos. We only vault probably twice a week, um, maybe three times if it's in the preseason and it's shorter approach, but, um, and so he will lift twice a week, two, two to three times a week. We'll have running workouts. We'll, so we'll do a lot of different things just to become the best athletes that we can be. And then that allows you to become a better pole vaulter as a result. So. Now, what's your week look like, you know, when you train, especially now before the Olympics, you know, it's the week before the Olympics, are you training as hard? And then do you have to watch too what you eat? Are there certain things you can and can eat? Cause I know a lot of, you know, when you run, especially, um, you know, are there certain things that agree and, and, and you can, you know, train as hard as you can the week before, or are you kind of, you know, still training, but not as hard as, as you've been for other or weeks past the way it normally works I would say I'm training as normal as any other year in that like we have kind of a, a bulking phase and and like just volume um and we we do that earlier in the year to get this workload in to become the strongest best version of ourselves and then as we taper down to you know less but still very specific types of lifting and workouts, you're going to, your body's going to lean out, but you're going to be a stronger version of that weight than you were the year, the year before, for example. Um, and so yeah, right now, well, I just came off of bad food poisoning. So this is oh, no. a lot different than you would have anticipated, but like I had a vault session today and a lift afterwards, but it's going to be different than, you know, two months ago where, you know, the lifting is a little bit more rigorous and just, just more reps, more sets, um, just pushing more weight. So now it's, we're down to, I think I did five sets of two snatches and then five by five leg press. And that was pretty much the bulk of it. Um, so you're just, you're pushing good weight, but it's, it's more for just explosiveness at this point. Um, and so normally, I would say when we're in season, kind of in the middle, it would be like vault twice a week, lift twice a week. Um, obviously you compete once, but we get, you know, a day of rest, 
probably two days of rest and recovery therapy in there. So he's really good at, you know, the one day will be pretty heavy and then the next day will be super light or off. And then the next day will be like sprints and lift. And then the next day will be off. So um, just to make sure that we're not constantly breaking down the body. Absolutely. Yeah, you know, outside of uh, I mean, outside of the the competition, what's the most? What's the thing? What What are you most looking forward to uh, when you get to, when you get to Tokyo for the for the for the festivities? Well, the problem is we're not going to really get to partake. Um, I'm I with COVID. I think you know even when you go to the dining hall, you're in these little like cubicles almost. Um, just they they want to keep it as you know tight locked as possible, just to you know, make sure COVID doesn't spread. And so I, I don't know that I'm necessarily looking forward to anything other than the competition. I be just with it being, I mean, it's basically going to be my room, the dining hall training, and that's going to be like it. So I, I'm obviously so excited to go, but I'm mostly just excited to get out there and compete. Yeah, absolutely. And I know I'm sure they're trying to try to keep it, you know, where it's it's contained, because I think they had a few cases already that they mentioned. Yeah, um, but yeah. which is understandable. It happens. And I, you know, I've been to competitions lately at the U.S. trials. There were a couple of people that tested positive and you know, it, at some of the meets that I've been to, there have been a couple of people that tested positive. And so it, it, you know, it's happened everywhere that I've competed this year. That's, that's kind of how it goes. And so I just pray that I am one of the ones that gets to make it onto the field. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, But yeah, so just, just being smart and just being really conscious of what I'm doing, where I'm going and, you know, keeping my mask on and, yeah, just spending a lot of time in my room, I think, is how it's going to go. Take a lot of uh, magazines you'll be, uh, and make sure you have your phone charger or iPad or whatever you're taking there for your room oh, to, yeah. uh, to stay busy there. Yeah, I mean, I'll be honest, the majority of my downtime is just spent laying on my couch or in my bed watching TV or playing on my phone. So <laughs> it's not going to feel that different. <laughs> <laughs> now, is there a show you're watching right now that that you can, uh, you know, on Netflix? Are you watching anything on Netflix or Hulu that, uh, you know, can take up a little time while you're uh, relaxing? Yeah, I, I, well, I'm watching The Bachelorette. That is like, <laughs> right now. No, um, I really like documentaries and like true crime type stuff. So I just watched a couple of those that were good on Netflix. And then, yeah, I'll, I mean, I'll find stuff to watch. I'm not super worried about it. Um, I just spend a lot of time on TikTok, honestly, just swiping through. It's just. Oh, you could, you could do that for hours. I'm like, holy cow, I'm still watching videos. I need to go outside and do something. Get something done. Well, the, the algorithm is very good and they know what you're gonna like (laughs) you just spend hours on there (laughs) i know it's it's brutal i mean i love it but i'm like yeah um now you just you came back from monaco talk about that that was the diamond league me that's kind of your last meet before the olympics um and and you placed first in that so talk a little bit about that how was that event because i think they did have fans there right Yes. So they had fans. Um, it was, it was great. I admittedly, I, I, I thought I felt good. And then, you know, my vaulting, it was, it was a much more inconsistent day than I've had in a long time. And my coach afterwards was like, yeah, you looked flat, but I wasn't going to tell you. And I didn't feel that bad, but then like looking back on it, it's like, okay, no, that, that wasn't, my most powerful day that I've had. And as a result, it just led to more misses and inconsistencies. But with that being said, I'm really excited that I jumped, you know, 490, which that's that 16 foot barrier, you know, being a little flat and knowing, you know, by that, by that jump, I I did find that focus again. And, and really, I, you know, some days it's just, it's easier to hit the positions and other days you really have to make it happen. And so that was one of those days I really had to 
overly focus on it and and kind of force it to happen whereas the trials it just I, my body was like on poppy and felt good so so it was really good to have that experience there and just know okay if I'm feeling this way you you have to you know overly focus like and this is what how we do that and so it was and then to to win in that field of women that's that's going to be the olympic final so um yeah i was just really happy with it all around and then i got food poisoning so <laughs> it's just did you get food poisoning there or when you came back it's hard to say because i i think i was on the verge of getting sick and granted i was taking covid tests the whole way through so it wasn't covid but i was on the verge i think on the way out there i didn't sleep at all so i was going on you know, 28 hours with maybe three hours of sleep. And so it just, oh, wow. it, I think that kind of like <laughs> brought my immune system down a little bit. And then, yeah, I thought I felt okay. But then I would say the day before we flew back to the States, I started to not feel so hot. And then the day we flew back as we were flying, I was like, I really don't feel well at all. And then when I finally got home, and then went to bed. I woke up in the middle of the night and that was just when all the bathroom trips started. So it was just, I don't um, know if it was something I ate along the way and my, my immune system was already down. So I just couldn't even fight it. I don't, I don't know what it was. Cause I don't, I don't usually have a sensitive stomach. So, but it was hard to, to know exactly where it hit since I was already not feeling great. So, but yeah what it is. I'd rather have gotten it then with yeah. months back than you know going to Tokyo so yeah and it, and it was after your Monaco trip so you won it and then you got it so I mean if there's a positive I guess out of it that yes. would be it yeah I, but this year has been just just an array of you know, things happening and just rolling with the punches so yeah and you had COVID in what December right I did. Um, and I had some pretty bad lingering side effects for a while. Um, I just, it, physically I came back pretty quickly and that was all I had really heard about was the physical side effects, but I was experiencing more of like a brain fog, um, the neurological side. And my main symptom when I was sick was a bad headache, just deep congestion that I'd never really felt before. So it makes sense that my lingering symptom would be, you know, something more neurological and, and the firing, the, the mind body connection was just off and was very flat. There was just a disconnect. And I couldn't, when you're coming down the runway full speed, it's a very, like, you have to be processing everything very quickly and then tell your body to make that impulse to jump. And it was like, I couldn't, I couldn't even see the takeoff and process what I was seeing. It wasn't a vision thing. It was just, I couldn't process what I was seeing quickly enough to see it. If that wow. Sense. Well, yeah. at least you're, you're, you're better now and, and there's no side yeah. effects anymore. I mean, it, it does take a little time. I know yeah. um, my doctor mentioned that with, with COVID, but. Well, and even still, I, the facility that we trained at indoors all last year, it's very dimly lit in there. I still to this day cannot jump in there. It's, it's so dark and none of my teammates have an issue with it, but I just, I can't, I, it's like, I go to sleep in there mentally. I don't know. <laughs> like it's yeah. really strange. Yeah. All of a sudden they're like, they're looking over and underneath the stands, Katie's sleeping with yeah, a, a pillow. Like, like, wait, you're up. Yeah. Right. Like <laughs> it's so, but I just, yeah, my coach is like, okay, we just won't practice yeah. here more this year. <laughs> well, at least, and where do you practice at? Do you practice at uh, different facilities in the United States then? Or, or is there one facility you yeah. uh, practice yeah. at? So we've kind of rotated. Um, okay. We're at Life University, which is where my coach is going to chiropractic school. Um, but they closed down the track to resurface it like a month before the trials. Oh, <laughs> man. Time. Um, but there's also Atlanta track club has an indoor little pit and runway in their, in their facility. And that's actually where I jumped that indoor meet a few weeks ago when it was raining out, they moved it in there. It's a great little place to jump. Um, I today was at Marietta high school. They have a phenomenal setup. 
Um, so it's nice that we're in an area that has a lot of good options. Um, so we don't have to worry about it too, too much. So you're, uh, you know, we, you know, I asked you, I asked you before the, before we jumped on about, um, you know, in 2004, Tim Mack was a local uh, Cleveland, Cleveland jumper from St. Ignatius and he was able to take home gold in 2004. Um, you know, you, know, you did say that he, he has uh, played a little bit of an influence on you. Did you reach out to him at all? Maybe on, on, on Twitter, on social media and just maybe uh, and get some advice or to hit him up. So I, um, I actually, when I trained in Knoxville, Tennessee for a couple of years, he was a coach in that area. So I actually got to know him pretty well. Oh, nice. Now. And my coach and him are good friends back from when they were on the circuit together. So I feel like I've gotten to know Tim pretty well, but back then I had just started pole vaulting as my first year. And then, you know, a Cleveland guy wins the Olympics. And so me and my mom, the one day, I, I don't remember if I did it or if she did it, but we his picture was on the plane dealer. We cut it out and then put a, we cut out my face and put it on his <laughs> face and brought it to a family party. And they're just like, look what I did. <laughs> Actually, I posted it on my Instagram a couple of weeks ago. Um, because it's just too funny. Like we, it was just, I definitely took inspiration from that. And actually my grandpa knew his dad and asked him to send me an autographed book one of his autobiographies and so he did and when I met him years later he said I I remember that because it was one of the few times my dad kind of treated me like a celebrity like asking me for an autographed thing I was like oh that was me <laughs> that's awesome <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's so cool yeah he's great that's he's I mean he's he was super tough and just got it done and I know my Brad has told me a lot of really good stories about him and so it's been cool to also be from Cleveland. Now do you still have that newspaper with your head on it? Yes I like I said I posted a picture of it a couple weeks ago on Instagram but it's it's at home like we I was gonna say is that something you pack years that's hilarious yeah. I was gonna ask you if you were gonna pack it for Tokyo it's like a good look <laughs> luck charm for you probably disintegrate at this point that thing is old but <laughs> that's awesome now we're hoping uh I was certainly hoping we can get a an updated picture with, with your face on your body um <laughs> in the plane dealer <laughs> now is there anybody else that gave you some great advice whether it was young or or recent that you know you looked up to or you never forget like wow that advice really was helpful and they were looking out for me yeah I well when I was younger I went to these uh retreats for church and you know your family members write you you know like letters of inspiration and whatever and so my dad actually wrote me one and he said set your goals to experience your dreams and your life will be truly extraordinary and i i actually like typed it into google to see if he got that from anywhere because like, <laughs> like that's too good and i mean it's the best advice i've ever followed because you know even if you know it doesn't go my way in a couple of weeks and even if you know i don't ever achieved like that highest level I want to my life's been pretty cool up to this point and I've met some amazing people and just yeah I wouldn't I wouldn't trade it for anything so very cool yeah well Ed do you have any uh last thoughts or, or questions for Katie before we let her go um, my last thought is good luck. To you. Good luck to you. Thank you yeah. very much for coming on. Um, and you have you have a lot going on there. And uh, um, we we we're, we're really uh, you know, on behalf of Northeast Ohio. Um, <laughs> you know we're, we're pulling for you. We can't we can't wait to see you compete. Oh, thank you so much. I really really appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. And, and bring back that gold, like we said, and we're going to be rooting for you and, yeah, and everybody will. <laughs> now, now, is there, is there one, one last question? Are there watch parties uh, in Northeast Ohio that, uh, you know, your family's setting up or. Yeah, um, I, there's a small one, a local one that's going to be for like my immediate family. But then I know that, that in, I think one of the community rooms or centers in Olmstead 
don't know if some of falls or township but it's on fitch road there's going to be a big one uh, okay. it's going to be nice and early uh i think i go around 6 30 in the morning so oh, it's not bad bring your baileys and your coffee and <laughs> <laughs> tail you with a, <laughs> oh, heck, yeah for anybody yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's what that's what a lot of people were doing for, I know, the World Cup soccer. They had yeah. early games and everybody was getting up for it. So, you know, same for the Olympics. You know, it, it comes around, you know, every four years. I think everybody can can get up a little early and, and go cheer you on. I, yeah, I always really enjoyed getting up early for a sporting event. There was just something about that where I never minded doing that. So I, I'd like to think that people won't be super upset about it because <laughs> you just, you get to get up and it's not like you have to go to work. You just, you get up, you go hang out with your friends, you drink. Yeah. You, like, you just, and you know, you dress in your sports gear. Like it's just, yeah, it's a good time. So I hope that that can be the case. I'm sure it will. Um, do you want to, do you want to plug uh, your website or, or I know you have a Facebook page and you're on Twitter and, and Instagram and all that. Do you want, uh, is there anywhere yeah. people can, can, uh, check you out? Yeah. So Social my media? book is just Katie Najat pole vault. And then my Instagram is, uh, the letter K T N A G O 13. And that's also my, uh, Twitter account too. So those are kind of the, the main ones. Um, I post pretty much all updates on there and I will definitely post the time like the specific time of the prelim and final as it gets closer. So I'll be putting that out there, but. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. So everybody will know exactly when you're, you're going, I'm sure they'll, they'll have it on, on, on different uh, social media and, and websites and, and with the Olympics, but if they follow you, they'll know it's firsthand. It's correct. Yeah. Yeah. Well, not necessarily. I could definitely. <laughs> <laughs> that's all right you'll, you'll correct it you're you're handy on social media and, and maybe you know you'll get do some tiktok while you're in tokyo and have fun with it yeah definitely well thanks for taking time to join us especially your busy schedule you know we really do appreciate it we're rooting for you bring back the gold and uh hopefully you know after the olympics we'd love to have you on again if you have some time we'll let it, you settle down and and get back but uh we'd love to talk to you again no, I appreciate that. I'll actually be kind of, that won't be the end of my season. Um, so uh, they're, the Diamond Leagues that we do, the final will be in September. So it'll be a little bit chaotic, but then yeah. also we'll kind of get back to some training. So I can definitely sit down with another Zoom call. So. Okay, sounds good. Well, we really appreciate awesome. you coming on and talking with us. It was a lot of fun. And uh We'll talk to you again soon. Good luck uh, and Good be luck. careful flying and, and have fun. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Thanks, Katie. All right. That is Katie Najat, and she's a USA pole vaulter. She is a native of Olmstead Falls, Ohio, went to Olmstead Falls High School, and you know she's representing the United States of America here in Tokyo. So, Ed, what a, what a cool story, and, I mean, what a great interview. She's was so nice to come on, especially um, with everything going on. I mean, it's just crazy that she came on, especially with everything going on. She leaves on the 25th for Tokyo and, and um, you know, can't thank her enough. Uh, it's, it's really, uh, I mean, a great story of perseverance and, um, you know, knowing what you want and going to get it. Uh, that's, that, that's, that's one of the biggest takeaways there. And then, uh, and then as well, experiencing uh experiencing in 2016 that uh and not achieving the goal you wanted to and taking the necessary steps to to get to the next level and uh sometimes you got to tear yourself you know you have to tear things down to the studs and build it back up and you know having to re you know retrain from the mental side of things and and turning into the tech and then going to the technique side of things that's huge someone who's you know who's that good um, sometimes your ego does get in the way and the big, the, you know, some great advice that she said to all athletes is, you know, you got to put the ego at the door. You know, you don't know, you don't know, don't be afraid to ask for help and, and, and keep learning. And that, that's how you evolve as an athlete, as a person too, for that matter. And, you know, now we, we, she's, she's seen the fruits of that, uh, by qualifying for the Olympics and we're hoping 
even more by uh, by bringing home bringing home a medal, uh, preferably gold, of course. But um, you know, we're just it's, it's super exciting uh, that in, in our in our pocket of the United States uh, that we have uh, athletes like her and, and and a few of the others that are going to be uh, representing the United States at the Olympics. Um, so we're just really, 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 really happy that she was able to, you know, to, to join us for, you know, taking an hour out of her day is, is huge, especially this close to, you know, your, your, your sporting athletic life's pinnacle. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, either way, we're going to be, uh, proud of her, especially, you know, she gave some great advice for, for all, you know, young athletes out there that you can't give up. You know, even though you might fall short in certain things, you, you have to work hard to get anywhere in, in whether it's life or whether it's athletics. You know, you have to put in the time, you have to put in the effort. And uh, if you do that, you can read some pretty amazing things like she's doing. And, and either way, I mean, you got to uh, be rooting for and proud of her um, with with everything she's in. You could tell she's very well grounded. So her parents did a great job with that, um, you know, coming on you know, a, a local podcast here. We've been around a little while, but uh, I think it's pretty cool that, you know, she was able to come on and, and I'm sure she's had a lot of larger um, other media ask her for interviews. So we're very uh, lucky to have her on here today. Absolutely. And, you know, when you're following us at Sports on Tap, you know, we're, we're going to be getting into high school football here soon. And that's, you know, that's kind of our bread and butter besides that in the, uh, in the, yeah. in the hockey season that we cover. Um, but quite honestly, you never know who we're going to get on the show. And, um, you know, Rob, it does a tremendous job of, uh, of lining up guests to come on here and being able to, uh, you know, being able to host an Olympian is, uh, it's pretty cool. It's not, not every day we get to talk to an Olympian and yeah, um, that's for, for sure. The, for those of you who follow our show, um, you know, we're, we're thankful for that. And then we're, we're, we're glad that uh, Katie was able to, to help us out a little bit tonight and, and, and be able to speak to us. Absolutely. And we might have another Olympiana after the Olympics. Uh, we'll wait and see, but, uh, well, that great job here today. And, uh, you know, thanks for, for taking time like usual, had a lot of fun and, uh, we'll do it again soon. Yeah. I look forward to it. I mean, high school football is just around the corner and, uh, you know, so we'll talk about that. We'll talk about it in due time, but yeah, for, you know, make sure you're following Katie on, uh, on, on, on the social media platforms and yep. uh, when she's on, uh, that's, you know, let's collectively, uh, watch cheer on and, 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 and send her some, uh, send her some good thoughts and, you know, from Northeast Ohio here for, her. uh, that's, uh, absolutely. Well, that's the, that's the, probably the most important thing for us right now. Yep. That's it. All right, Ed, great job tonight. And, too, uh, well done. And, and we'll talk to you soon. Thanks Rob. Take it easy, man. All right. For sports on tap, I'm Rob Trump. I want to thank Ed Dick. I want to thank Katie Najat for joining us here on sports on tap until next time. We will see you later.